Now this is our thrust bearing assembly for the crankshaft thrust. I'll show you how this all goes together. But this plate here goes onto the crankshaft. All right, so your crankshaft is back here. Okay, so crankshaft, then bearings with proper shim stack. Okay, and then this captures onto the block. So there, so the block, this is bolted onto the block right here and crankshaft is pushing this way. So converted charge pressure pushes the crankshaft towards the thrust bearing. Okay, so let's look at how this all lays out on, on the crankshaft. So this just goes on exactly like this, right over the face of the crankshaft. So you always have to see, you can see here, this is the shape of that outer plate. Like so, just fits right in there. So there's a bunch of little clearance and a bunch of little stuff that needs to happen to make sure that nothing's pressing or fitting together or doing anything stupid. So that goes on there like that, the bearings, and then that outer case. Just like so. And then we put a little extra clearance in the rear main bearing. So I didn't show you that, but I also have to put a little bit of clearance in this rear main bearing so it doesn't hit the rear part of the thrust it only uses the front part of the thrust this has extra clearance so it requires this bearing that we're putting in here right here that this bearing to be correct and proper spacing so i can get my thrust clearance on the crankshaft so this controls anything of the crankshaft pushing forward which is converter charge pressure i've said this a million times people there's nothing in an engine that will ever destroy a thrust bearing, except the transmission. There's nothing that makes a crankshaft go forward or backwards, nothing. You, you, you show me anything here that makes a crankshaft go forward or backwards, unless there's something wrong, uh, tapered in the journals or something stupid. But it's always an outside force that is either making it go forward or backward. And converters, with big converters, especially stuff that's sitting on a chip or stuff in a turbo car, uh, converter charge pressure pushes the crankshaft forward, destroys the thrust bearing. Thrust bearings are not really designed to do that because it's not a pressure fed bearing. But this takes all sorts of abuse. So anyways, I'm going to uh, we'll get this all put together. I'll set it all up and uh, show you the assembled piece. Then we need to go into it after we get this whole assembly on. Then we put the camshaft in it and put the rest of the front together. So what has to happen here is uh, my shim stack and everything is all a little too tight. So it is either way too loose or too tight. So I'm going to have to, I think here, yeah, it's a different bearing. Um, so what I'm gonna end up doing here is I need to take this collar off and I'll put it up in the lathe and I'll just machine off a little bit off this collar in order to get it to get set back farther. All right, so now we have, oops, sorry, zero, five thousandths. Five thousandths, so it's a bunch of jerking around with this, uh, with this collar that's up in here. This is, uh, has these holes here because it also fits the spline, uh, spline drive uh, style crank snout so it's a dual purpose deal so anyways got that now we're gonna start shoving in the camshaft all right so that's taken me about an hour and a half of jerking around just to get this thing to clearance out and be right so I'm going to uh, we'll start going through camshaft and how this whole thing sets up now this is a idler post uh, drive so you'll see that go on and that's the post that holds idler on and then bottom cam gear upper cam gear on top of the camshaft. So just take a look at that.
sorry about that to explain what we're doing right there we what I'm doing is these gear drives or mother because it's not like they're easily adjustable so you know I can put the bottom gear on I got the the idler gear in but what you do is you put in or the way I do it there's different ways of doing it but this is the way I do it it's just a little quicker easier I take this idler gear off I put the engine at top dead center and this is not exact because I'm I'm still gonna degree the camshaft this is just roughing it in and getting it close so I don't have to uh, usually can get it within you know three four degrees just by doing it uh, rough it in like this so I just bring it up TDC right there put the indicator on the intake uh, lifter not the exhaust like I did the very first time and then I take the idler out and then I just find out what the number is. So on, on this particular camshaft, lobe lift at TDC on the intake is 140. And that would be degreed in at 112. So I just rotate this over until my lift gets 10, 20, 30, to 100 and 140 thousandths of lift. Then I put my idler back in Bada boom, bada bing. It's pretty darn close. Now I can come into it and degree this thing. Cause it's kind of a mother because it's, all these bolt holes go in and it's, it's just very minutely offset. So you just kind of have to rotate everything. Uh, but if you don't have a baseline of where it's at, it's really hard to get there. So it's a really good idea to just figure out what your uh, lobe lift is at TDC. Set at TDC, turn your camshaft to that lobe lift, bang pretty darn quick and, and simple right there uh, if you can get it really accurate without uh, having to turn the, the idler so when I put the idler on it actually turned the gear just a little bit that's why I have to come into it and still have to fiddle fudge around with it just a little but uh, we'll be getting pretty close there so it takes a little bit of time to degree these uh, degree these uh, uh, gear drives in not as easy as just loosening something up and moving it a little bit uh, so anyways I'll uh, put it back in the uh, in uh, up on the camera tripod here and start to green it. So it's interesting because so what I've done is it was at 116 and a half and that's what I showed you so I moved it to where I want it to be which is going to be 112 I, uh, act, I'm sorry so I moved it to, to 116 I took the bolts out of here I moved it to 112 and if you can see pretty hard to see but that's how far off it is which is about right so what you end up doing is the camshaft is now in the right spot crankshaft is in the right spot i can take this gear off and i'm gonna uh, move the camera but you can take this gear off and i keep on uh, moving it around until the bolt holes line up without having to move the camshaft it's a it's a, it's a complicated thing but it's so easy it's complicated so I'll just put this camera down and uh, you'll just see me taking the gear off, on, and trying to find the perfect spot to put the gear. So this really wasn't <clears throat> is probably as long as what it looked like. It probably like took me uh, that was like three or four times. So you get it close to within a couple of a couple of degrees just by doing the TDC thing, like I said. And then I move it to where I want it. And then it's just a matter of taking the gear off and then indexing it and finding out where it relines back up. So I did have to do it a couple times. It isn't nearly as long and complicated as what it seems but you just have to not 
uh, get your head, don't get lost in the trees kind of thing. You know, don't, don't, you know, get lost in the trees trying to find the forest. It's just, uh, it, it's a little complicated, but it kind of makes sense. And sometimes you just have to, um, sometimes you just have to go through the process of doing it and you'll just kind of figure it out. So it's not really a big deal. It took me a grand total of about 10 minutes to, to, to degree the camshaft. Obviously it probably takes you know, less than 10 minutes on like a belt drive or something where you can just do something real quick. So this is all degreed. We'll put this all the rest of the way together here and then I'll have to check my thrust. is we have the final assembled degreed gear drive with thrust bear, with thrust, uh, rollerized thrust for crankshaft. So really a super cool, a Billy Badass uh, bulletproof, uh, well nothing in the world's bulletproof, but uh, bulletish proof uh, timing set. Now, does this, uh, um, does it absorb harmonics like a belt drive? No. Uh, but it is the most rock solid. Uh, it is, if this all breaks, there is something so majorly, majorly catastrophic going on that it would have broke anything three or four times over before I would ever do this. You'll probably break motor parts and, and be able to save every single part that's in a gear drive, especially on, on this type of gear drive here. So now we'll put the cover on and when the cover comes on, the cover will uh, grab this idler post so it supports this side of the idler post and keeps it all captured in there and then uh, it gives you access to the top gear so you can do this everything with the front cover everything on but I was just showing you how it was just a little bit easier to do it with it off um, so you can change camshafts you can do everything but you better make your marks and line everything all up uh, otherwise it is a mother doing this at the track if you don't have all the right tools I mean horrendously bad so uh, what we'll do now is I'll just uh, start putting the front cover on and then we'll work on the dampener, uh, getting the hub on, getting all that on. Uh, then we'll probably just throw the oil pan on it and then we'll start moving over the heads. Now, in the meantime, you've also been seeing, uh, we have put on the, uh, uh, the oil pump. I'm sorry, this is the uh, oil pump adapter, which just goes right to, this is the inline to the motor from the dry sump oil pump. So pump's gonna be out here, you see that later. Uh, and we've also put on the water plates. So these are the water plates that cover up our water jackets. So like I said, water in, all the way across the motor, water out. So you're not gonna see anything like that anywhere else um, in a big horsepower endurance deal like what this is, uh, the biggest. So anyways, put the camera down and we'll uh, start shooting more.
So what I had to do right there was I had to put the cam sink in. So there's a little bit of a uh, engineering, there's a dog. Hey, Dewey. Yeah. A uh, little bit of an engineering problem here. The top gear of the distributor, uh, I'm sorry, the top gear of the camshaft just won't allow the distributor gear to go through. This is a cam sink, i.e. distributor. And uh, so what it does is I have to take the front cover off and pull the camshaft out just slightly and then get this by it. Then I was having a problem getting it all in because the stupid O-ring wouldn't allow it to go in. Uh, so I just modified that. Everything's in, cam sink is in, uh, and it is oriented to 185, 180, 185 degrees before top dead center. So good general place to be. Fuel tech, like what we're going to be using, is it uh, doesn't really matter as long as it's uh, 50, 60, 70 degrees before. Uh, it's no big deal for those. Uh, Holly's got to be 185 degrees. But anyways, so we got that on there. Uh, everything's in the front. So we're just going to put the balancer on temporarily so I can set up a top dead center pointer and there's a fuel pump extension that'll go on here because I'm going to drive the fuel pump off the camshaft and then um, with the balance like I said balancer will just be there uh, with just a couple bolts on it uh, because I'm going to do a more drive mandrel stuff so then we're going to start working on top half 